Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass afterwards. That means it is not now. Afterwards. That was the time Prophet Joel was speaking of. The afterwards is now. So you can say now it has come to pass. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. The promise of God is that your old men will do what? Speak to me. So who will dream? Old men, okay. Who will see visions? The young men. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Numbers 12 and then verse 6. Are you there? Numbers 12 and then verse 6. Numbers 12 and then verse 6. Um, so we find dream. That, that, that's the first place. Now let's see what Numbers 12, 6 says. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a... How does he speak? Glory to God. All right, so let's go to the New Testament now and see Matthew 2, 13. Let's see the practical way he led his people. Matthew 2 and then 13. Now when they had departed, who are they? This was the father, the parents of the, of the child, Jesus. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, how did he appear to him? Where did he appear to him? In a dream. All right. Arise, take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt. He didn't say go. He said flee to Egypt. And stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Today, I want to speak to you on dreams and divine leadings. Dreams and divine leadings. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of your word will give light, give understanding to us simple people. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I made my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, daddy, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. In Jesus' matchless and beautiful name we are prayed. Can I have a believing amen? amen? Let your amen not sound like my voice. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, have your seat in God's presence. Some people are in church today. Uh, and it's amazing to have them around. In due time, we'll talk about them. But let's speak about the word of God today. Glory to God. Dreams and divine leadings. I want to speak to something many believers are very sensitive about. It is something they will fight you for with all they've got. is their sacred and hallowed chamber. Their place of interaction with God is their dreams. Believers will do anything. If you begin to tell them that Jehovah does not speak in dreams anymore, they look at you and say you are saying heresy. Right? But we want to look at scriptures because you are New Testament believers and you are in a church that believes in scriptures. I want to look from the pages of scriptures what exactly does divine leading mean as it pertains to dream. And can I trust my dreams? I want to answer those questions. Can I trust my dreams? Whose voice am I, whose voice am I hearing when I dream? Could this be God? Or could this be myself? Are my dreams trustable if there is a word like that? And um, I just want to speak as it concerns that. When I ask many believers as I move around and as I minister the word, and I sit down and counsel believers, when I ask them, do you hear from God? Have you ever heard from God? The first thing they say is that the Lord speaks to them through dreams. So believers have turned to the primary way they hear from God and the elementary way they hear from God is dreams. So even if you speak and ask questions and you say something like in the New Testament after Pentecost, there's no place in scriptures where it is recorded that believers or apostles were led by dreams. I put it on social media and they wanted to fight me because they felt that what I was saying was bad. But I was not saying what was bad, I was saying something that was in scriptures. It's a challenge. And I asked us three weeks ago in this church, that I hold you $2 million if you can't find a place for me post-Pentecost in scriptures where they were led by dreams. 
And um, I, I, wish, I wish it was like, somebody also told me if you find $2 million, I would have been $2 million richer now because no one has been able to take me up. Now, three days ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said something that I love. He said, believers love their dreams and their dreams love them. Uh, you see, believers are very passionate when it concerns their dreams. I mean, they can stone you uh, because it's God that spoke to me. He spoke to me through my dreams. I knew who to marry. In fact, the Lord saved me from that useless man because of dream. It wasn't in the dream I knew. If I'd married him, I would have been in trouble by now. It was my dream. Glory to God. So the Lord told me, he said, when you preach it, be careful. He said, because their faces will be hard. The way they will look at you, because you are challenging something, they have built their Christian experience even upon. Many people started their companies because they had a dream. So how can you come here and say dreams and you are, I mean, the fact that you ask that question means you are inferring that God does not live their dreams anymore. But I said, I didn't say that. I only asked a question, right? So let's proceed here. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, I, I want to get into the meat of this. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, the sons of God. In the book of John chapter 16 verse 13, Jesus speaks as it concerns the promise of the Holy Ghost. He said, when the Spirit of truth is come, he said, he will guide you into all truth. So one of the basic work of the Holy Ghost is to guide us, is to lead us. The Bible says the Spirit will lead you. It didn't say dreams will lead you. But can the Spirit lead you through dreams? I can answer that question affirmatively for now. But we will answer the question as we proceed. That. What I intend to say to you is that the Spirit chooses how he leads you. Because the Spirit is the one who leads. You should not look to your dreams for direction. You should look to the Holy Spirit for direction. And that's the first thing I want to tell believers today. That for direction, you should not look for, to your dreams for direction. You should not look for your dream to make decisions. You should actually look up to the person of the Holy Spirit. In the days before Christ's death, now, I want to make a dispensational separation here. In the days before the Christ came, and the coming of the Holy Spirit to indwell believers, which was what we call Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, right? In the day before that time, one of God's primary way of speaking to people was through dreams. The Spirit had not come. Uh, it was indwelt inside believers. Uh, so that before Pentecost, uh, men do not have the Spirit dwell inside of them. He actually came upon them for an assignment. Uh, so that's the major difference between you and Elisha. The major difference between you and Jeremiah, no matter how anointed they were, was that the Spirit did not dwell in them forever. The Spirit did not dwell in them eternally. He only came upon them. Is somebody listening to me? He only came upon them. And so you have the Spirit inside of you. Therefore, one of God's primary way of speaking to these people was that he spoke to them through their dreams. And that's why we started from in the book of Numbers chapter 12 verse 6. Say, if there be a prophet among you, say, I the Lord will speak to him through vision and through dreams. Right? So that the Lord will speak through his prophets is not something we argue about. There is a prophet among you, the Lord said in Numbers 12, 6, I'll speak in prophecy and I'll speak in vision and in dreams. Now, the Bible provides us with numerous stories and examples. I've seen believers quote this to me. And I want to help you quote it, you know, as you argue with me as I'm preaching. Because some of you arguments are coming up in your mind. It's okay. That's why you're in the Bible, believe in church. Glory to God. But I would help you. I want to help you even get points to support dreams. You understand? That's how you start from. You don't start with just telling them what is not. You tell them what it is. So I want to give you 10 examples of dreams in scripture, sir. Where the Lord spoke to people via dreams. Glory be to God. And the first one is the man Abimelech. In Genesis chapter 20 verse 3, the Lord came to Abimelech and said, you are a dead man. You are a dead man because you are with another man's wife. You are a dead man. That's, Abimelech, that's Genesis 20 verse 3. The Lord spoke to Jacob via dream twice. Genesis 28 verse 12. And then Genesis 31 verse 10. In, in fact, his business idea came via dreams. How he actually won over Laban uh, because he was in a war with Laban. You know, when two fraudulent people meet one another, one person is going to lose. All right? The Bible says concerning Jacob that he was a supplanter. So he was in the house of a man who was more fraudulent than him. He said, you will serve me. He said, I don't have, I, I, I came here for a wife. You know, that's why he came. He came for a wife. Now give me a wife. The man said, listen, you will serve me. I know you don't have money. You will serve me for seven years for one woman. What kind of woman is that? Seven years. And scripture says, uh, Jacob kept looking at Rachel for seven years and he couldn't do nothing. For seven years. He was serving, he was working for seven years. 
And on the night when he unveiled the face, I mean, somebody asked me, say, why would you serve again for another seven years? I said, you don't understand. This man has been looking for seven years that this is Rachel. And so on the night of the wedding, they had fraudulently given me another wife. I mean, that's the highest fraud you can ever receive. I was asking myself, thank God for church wedding. I mean, you, you, it's white, you will see, I will see how it looks. I mean, I don't know how they did the wedding those days, but I think it was at night. So they just, they just brought the man at night. And uh, when the morning came, I was asking myself, didn't you hear her voice? Didn't you? Because you have been looking at this woman for seven years. Glory be to God. But exactly, he was doomed. Because a, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a street word that says, can you, can you, uh, the monkey pass or something. You try to droop somebody, somebody do you back. Uh, that exactly, that's what happened to Jacob. Jacob has sold the seed concerning Esau, fraudulently collected the blessings and ran away. Glory to God. And somebody else duped him. A greater duper duped him. Uh, and then when he woke up in the morning, he said, what's going on here? The wife had gone. And so he said, okay, so he went and said, can I have my wife back? I mean, take this person. He said, no, according to our culture, you should have told the man about the culture before you started. According to our culture, now it's not a problem. You will now serve another seven years. So he served 14 years. And he was supposed to live with only two women after 14 years. My, my God, that's a journey that is crazy. That's a mad journey. So, so, so after looking for mouse, he said he wanted to go. The man said, I have learned by experience that I am blessed because of you. I have learned. You can't go. So, so you, you need to serve. So he asked him, what do you want? But in a dream, the Lord has spoken to him. He, had a, he, said, he said in that dream, he saw that all the sheep were stripped. I mean, that's, that's not normal. I mean, in fact, you may have seen many sheep before, but it's difficult to find a sheep that is stripped. In, that means black and white and all of that. It's very real. But that's exactly what the Lord did. And the Bible says he took, he took leaves and plants, and anytime they want to mate, they will look at it. It doesn't make any sense. You can go and try it. You won't have, you won't have stripped uh, goats and animals and all that. But that's exactly because he found out in a dream. So you see, dreams are powerful. Glory be to God. Amen. And then number three, even Laban. Laban was going to pursue the man by the name of Jacob. He was going to pursue because after he had gone, his son says, ah, Baba, you, but I thought you were sharper than this. They have taken everything. All our strong animals are gone. He said, I'll follow. Like Pharaoh, you'll follow. But the Lord appeared in a dream and warned him. I said, he shouldn't do anything. Glory to God. Genesis 31, 24. Joseph had a dream. In fact, the dream led him to trouble. That's 7, 5, that's 7, 9 of Genesis. I'm not going to talk about that. You all know the Joseph's dream. Glory to God. And then Pharaoh had a dream. In fact, Pharaoh's dream was so monumental that it saved a nation. So how can you say dreams are not possible? Dreams are not important. Glory to God. 41, 1, 41, 5. He had the dream repeatedly to show that that is something that was sure that was going to happen. It's like when you bet, they say sure banker. Glory be to God. Can I see anybody say amen? Okay. That means there are real people here who bet. Amen. That's an assumption. Amen. All right. <laughs> Another one is Solomon. I mean, Solomon had a dream. First Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Solomon also had a dream. You see Nebuchadnezzar of the king, he also had a dream. He had a dream and the dream troubled him. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. And in fact, his own was crazy. He, he didn't want to tell them to dream. He said they should tell him his dream. I mean, I've never seen a wicked king more than that. It's like me calling you and saying, you call, I had a dream yesterday. Come and tell me my dream. I mean, that, that, that's just, he's just killed them. And he put them on death row. Just kill them. You are tired of us, kill us. I mean, but God has showed. And, amen. And then Daniel 7, Daniel also dreamed, uh, had a dream. And then if you look at the life of, then we get to the New Testament. You know, all of those examples were Old Testament. Hallelujah. And then you get to the New Testament, and then you found uh, Matthew. Matthew, um, the Bible speaks in Matthew 1 20, Matthew 2 12, Matthew 2 19 about Joseph. That's the father of Jesus, uh, the earthly father of the Christ. Uh, the Bible says he had a dream, and the Lord warned him repeatedly. So you could see that one area, one way where the Lord led Joseph was via dream. In fact, it didn't lead him any other way. It didn't lead him any other way. So it's awesome to understand that Joseph was an example of a man who followed God in our time. In that time and in that day. And the primary way God led him was via dream. But understand that at that time the spirit had not yet come. Is somebody following me? At that time the spirit had not yet come. At that time the spirit only came to empower people for an assignment. You know, he said the anointing is upon me now. I want to preach the anointing upon me. I can sing it. That kind of anointing that comes upon you when you are preaching and teaching and singing comes upon them in those days also. But one difference between you and them is that the spirit does not live in them. So that after the assignment, it lifts. Right? Even now, the anointing upon lifts. Lifts. But the anointing on the inside stays. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
Remember one story you might also miss out when it comes to leading is Matthew 27 and then verse 19. Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife had a dream. It's okay, sorry, Pontius. I'm, I'm back. Pontius Pilate's wife, thank you. Potiphar's wife had a dream. And in that dream, he said, I, 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 I suffered so many things. You see, that was a nightmare. You see, your nightmare can speak. <laughs> see, I suffered many things because of this man. Release this man because he's innocent. So you find that also again in your scriptures. Hallelujah. Now, there are a couple of things to note out of the things I've said. Uh, first, God used dreams to speak not only to saved believers. Uh, saved believers was Jacob, was Joseph, was Daniel, was Solomon. He spoke to them. But also on lost unbelievers, people who are not saved. Like Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream. Laban had a dream. He didn't have a relationship with the God of Israel. But he had a dream and lost spoke to him. Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, Pilate's wife. And then the second thing you need to note. That every story on this list happened before Christ's death and resurrection. And the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. That should tell us something. The scripture was written specifically for our learning and our instruction. And the Bible understood what dreams are. And the Bible covers a lot about dreams and about dreaming. And you find that in your Bible. You find that in scriptures. The Bible had an understanding. I mean, it, it's not a mistake, the scriptures. Because if you look at the Old Testament, there were references again and again on dreams. So you see it again and again. But when you get into the new, you can't find it after the resurrection of the Christ. And after the Holy Spirit had come. But you will find something that God spoke to people. And God led people. But what happened is that he did not lead them their dreams anymore. So that the Bible became quiet as it concerns that. And it became loud as it concerns other areas of leadings. That teaches us something. The Bible became quiet as it concerns dream. But it became loud as it concerns certain areas of leadings. Therefore, prior to that, uh, you will not find the word vision concerning uh, leading as it concerns other people. It only happened, the word vision was only used as it concerns the prophetic in the Old Testament. Uh, therefore, Jeremiah said, I had a vision. So, ordinary men don't have vision. People like Joseph never had vision. <laughs> Those who had vision were prophets. Who had vision and then they say, I receive an oracle of the Lord. That's how Jeremiah will put it. Isaiah will say, I have a vision. So what you find is that the word vision now becomes concurrently used again and again repeatedly in the New Testament. And that tells us something and teaches us something, right? But let me proceed here by saying there is importance of dreams according to scriptures. According to scripture, because I'm somebody who will tell you that you do not run reading only the New Testament. That's why it's called the Bible, the whole and the new. But understand that we do not live in the Old Testament times, according to this pensation. We live in the New Testament because the promise of the Old has become fulfilled in the New. Therefore, I can speak in tongues. It's a proof that I'm in the New Testament. I have the Spirit dwelling inside of me. It's a proof that I'm in the New and I'm of the New Testament. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? All right, so what are the importance of dreams according to the whole of the Bible? Because listen to this, I'm not here to challenge that your dreams are valid. It looks like I'm trying to do that, but I'm not here to do that. I'm here to ensure that your belief, instructions, and all that you have is solidly built, even on the Bible. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. Importance of dreams according to scriptures, number one, dreams can be how God protects his people or foretells his provision for them. Dreams can be how God protects his people. This is how he protects his people. This is how he provides for them. God wants Laban in a dream. I will destroy you if you don't, don't, if you don't take care of my son. Jacob. Is out so the Lord can actually speak to other people concerning you. That's exactly what happened. We are dreams. So he wants us. He tells us things. You can write 1 Kings 3, 5 to 14 down. For the sake of time, I wouldn't. For time, I wouldn't want to go into that. Number two, dreams are used to get information about the future. Or to provide guidance. Dreams, according to the whole of scriptures, is the way by which the Lord guides us. Is the way the Lord gives information. Is the way the Lord leads us. So, the Lord can lead you via your dreams. Valid. Number three. Dream is a way of knowing the will of God. Is the way of knowing the will of God. The way of knowing the will of God. You know... 
Jacob had a dream. And in his dream, he saw a ladder that reaches to the heaven and back. And then he saw the angels ascending and descending. And he called the place Bethel, the house of God. How did he do that? Because he felt that God was coming. God was present in this place. And when he came back from Laban's house, he was there that he built an altar. He knew the will of God and the mind of God. How? By following him on that. Number four, dreams are sources of divine revelation. It reveals what is going to happen or explain current events. What's going to happen to me? What's, going to be, what's tomorrow going to look like? The Lord can provide that information. And that's what happened to Joseph. Joseph knew what to do for time. Now, take the son. Take your son. Take, your, take the mother. Flee from Egypt. Flee, flee, flee. The next morning, they started killing people. But how did the Lord keep keeping? The Lord kept him because he had a dream. So the question is not, can God speak to someone through a dream? His track record in history definitely proves that he can. The more relevant question is, does God speak true dreams today? And the answer is yes, but, you see the way I said, yes, but, if you are right, you know that but you would make exclamation mark like 20. So what are they both? In the New Testament record of the post-Pentecost years, there isn't one example of God speaking to someone through a dream. In that record, God sent dreams are replaced by God sent visions. In that record in the New Testament, God sent dreams, which was what I explained now. I gave you plenty of examples. In the old, were replaced by God sent visions. Ananias had such a vision. Acts chapter 9, 10 to 16. As did Cornelius. Acts chapter 10, 1 to 8. He, he had a vision and said, send unto Peter. So that he can show you the way of the Lord very clearly. And Peter therefore also had another vision that pertains to the same event. Acts chapter 9 again. And then, no, 10 now, 9 to 23. He had a vision. He, he, in that vision he said, I, I'm not going to... He saw a sheet rolled from heaven. Glory to God. And, he's, and the Lord said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And he saw unclean animals there. He said, I've never eaten anything that isn't impure in my life. I'm not going to eat this thing. That was not a dream. That was a vision. Right? Paul had at least two of that. Acts 16, 9 to 10. That's when he received what he called the Macedonian call. Glory to God. And Acts 18, 9 to 10. As you progress in this series of, of being led of God, you know that's what took us here. Yeah, we are, we are on the journey of being led by the Spirit and hearing the voice of God. And therefore, the title is Dreams and Divine Leadings. All right? I would also speak as we proceed. Next week, I'm going to speak on that. No, I'm, I'm not sure next week. I think it's two weeks' time. I'm going to speak on that spiritual phenomenon called vision so that you will understand vision better. You understand that vision is not dream. Right? Uh, but for the purpose of... Um, uh, for the purpose of this learning, let, what, what is the difference between a dream and a vision? Right? Uh, let, let's do what is the difference between a dream and a vision. The term dream refers to the visual or oral sensations that a person experiences while sleeping. The key note there and the key word there is while sleeping. It's an oral or visual experience or sensation that a person has while sleeping. Genesis 28, 12, Job 33, verse 15. Dreams. Dreams. Then, what is that word? What is that word? Do you have Job 33.15? Uh, Job 33.15. So that it doesn't look like he just quotes all the scriptures. He never let us see it. Amen. Glory to God. Are we there? Job 33.15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when the deep sleep falls upon men, why slumbering on their beds? Do you understand? People slumber on their bed. Right. The term vision in the Greek is the word chazon, which refers to visual representations, like a video or a movie given by God's direct. It comes from God. But it, it, it's, it's, it's a picture, it's a video, it's like watching a movie that may or may not require interpretation. 
Um, Kennedy Egan spoke about hours of vision he had with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it wasn't a dream, it was a vision. And what's the difference? Is that it occurs while people are awake. Vision occurs while you are awake. Dreams happen while you are sleeping. Visions occur while you are awake. Perhaps God is not interested in sleeping people. Perhaps God is not interested in us to sleep and slumber. The Bible says just a little sleep, just a little slumber. Uh, perhaps, perhaps the Lord wants a people who are fired up for him. Perhaps the Lord is saying in the place of refueling will direction come. Perhaps the Lord is saying in the place of slumber, instruction will not come in this New Testament. That if you really want to be particularly led of the Spirit and of God, then you must have what we call vision. Uh, you must have all confession. Now, let me divert to my two million dollars question I asked two weeks ago. Uh, because in our group, um, I mean, uh, if you are in the WhatsApp group of the church, um, somebody said that um, the message translation uh, actually in, of Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 9, spoke about Paul having a dream, not a vision. Is somebody listening to me? Uh, that's what the message translation said. That's what the message Bible says, right? If, if I have the message Bible, you could, or you can just check it out. I'm not sure they have the message Bible. But I, 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 I thought I said they should put it in the, in the slide, but if it's not there, it's fine. All right, so now, in that portion of scripture, I want to say something to you now. Um, the message Bible is not a translation. Because this is a place to correct some things, Right? Because some of us read the Bible, and when you say read the Bible, you read the message Bible. You see, the message Bible is not a translation. It's a paraphrase of the Bible. Now, what is the difference between a paraphrase and a translation? How many of us speak Yoruba here? I want to do an example. I want to be able to be sure I'm on solid ground. Ah, how many of us speak Igbo? Okay. Once in a while, okay. So it was in a while. Okay, so, all right, so for the purpose of understanding, um, can I have somebody who speaks Yoruba fluently come off stage? And somebody who speaks Igbo fluently come off stage? Oh, Edo person, you want to be represented? <laughs> all right, all right, so. Um, <laughs> you want to represent your ancestors? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, um, a paraphrase is different from a translation. I want to show you how that is. Alright, so I'm going to speak certain interpreted. Um, so, I am going to church. What is I am? I in Yoruba. Amy. Okay. I am. am. <laughs> Amy. Amy. Law. Amy. Going. Law. Right. Amy. Law. Okay. Going to church. Emil Lossi, Ile Jossi. You see? Emil Lossi, Ile Jossi. That's the interpretation. Is that not so? And that's word for word translation. Is that not so? All right, so if you get it wrong, it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because I'm, I'm not sure I can. Even the Holy Spirit has not. They are able for you. Okay, so the same thing. I am going to church. All right, so I am. Anamagauka. I am. That's, that's that long in your language. They are saying no. Say, it's correct. Say it again. Oh, I am. Anama. Going to. Ga. U, ga. Church. Uka. Uka. Okay, so. He got it. I know Uka is church. <laughs> All right, so. I am going to church. That's what he just said. All right? Now, I will make a longer statement. I'll make a longer statement, and I would ask them to just give me the idea behind it. Do you know what I'm saying? All right. I went to Korodu. While I was coming back, I took a, a boat and there was a storm. But I prayed and there was no storm. And I got to VI. <laughs> God bless you, sir. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, he um he one lossy one 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 one
won ba iji pade bo oluwa ko won yo now do you get the idea of what I said via that do you understand that what he said i mean if you read its tpt translation for instance in yoruba the tpt translation where it stops and at the tpt translation will say full stop alo abo that's what it will say so that a street person will be able to understand it but if you look at alo abo in the original trans in the original text of the greek you won't find that word Therefore, people say, and that's why you will never see me quote the TPT. Because TPT actually says it is a translation. But theology and Bible scholar will tell you that TPT is not a translation because it was not committed to test by test interpretation of scriptures. When you read the NIV, it is test by test. If you read the New King James, it is test by So I take a Greek word and I interpret it to English. I take another Greek word and I interpret it to English. And therefore, when you take some of these Bible verses, even though they are different translations, they look the same. But when you read the message sometimes, or easy to read Bible, then you ask, ah, why is this one so long? It's just supposed to be two lines. It's because easy to read breaks it down. It's really a Bible, Bible for the blind. Right. It was a bread that's translated to make it easy for you to read. All right, so do the Igbo translation of Ikorodu came back. Okay, Pastor, I'm going to Ikorodu. Ye mira ye miri muzo but chuku mana chuku thank you mana chuku ne du ne du pastor in so he was protected <laughs> <laughs> ah I feel like punching him <laughs> ah, he did not do your sisters well <laughs> please go and sit down but I, I I just want you to get an idea of what I'm trying to say. Right, so when you see the message translated, when you see the message, and, and that's what the person who wrote the message Bible is called Peterson, uh, Eugene Peterson, who was, uh, was one of the lecturers in a school called Regent College in the Canada. He's a professor of scriptures. Therefore, he said something. Uh, it, it, you will not find him put, he put the message Bible. You won't see the message translation. So that when people are speaking about what scripture says, please don't use the message Bible and be arguing with them. It's it's a paraphrase. It's, it's actually bringing the Bible to our language so that you can be everyday living. Instead of thou comest, go Esther. So the man says, what would you look like if Jesus were actually alive in our days? And he introduced the colloquial languages, what we use these days. And therefore, you read the message and say, you see, he messed up. Or you see, he messed up. He says, shit. I mean, you will see something like, ah! In the Bible, Jesus. But it, it was like, um, if you look at the life of the Christ, you will see that he was actually speaking with people, intermingling with them and all of those things. Why did I say that? I said all of that to say this. All right? That what you, the word you find in Acts chapter 16, verse 9, is actually the Greek word that means uh, vision, which is the word chazon. Uh, uh, it, is not, it is not by any way, or oh, sorry, sorry. Acts 16, 9, what you will find, the word vision, is the word orama, orama, which if you want to spell it, um, sometimes it's spelled H-O-R-A-M-A or O-R-A-M-A, orama. The word dream in Greek is the word onerous. Uh, so the word that was used particularly in Acts 16, 9, that, okay, so Paul had a vision. If you carry the Greek Bible, the Bible was written in Greek, what you will find is actually the word orama. You will not find the word onerous. Oneros. You understand that? You understand? Oneros is actually spelled like one. I-R-O-S. But it's not, it's not called Oneros. You know, like English, Oneros. It's actually called Oneros. Do you understand that? So, Orama is the vision, and that's what you will find in that. To be clear, I'm not completely ruling out the possibility that a dream can be found from God. I'm not ruling out that possibility. I will never take the question to such an extreme answer. I'm simply saying that if someone tries to use um, Acts 16, 9, or use Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Uh, you know, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, Paul was teaching. Am I, am I boring you? All right. In Acts chapter 17, it was the day of Pentecost, and they had given their, I mean, the Holy Ghost had come, they said they had been accused of being drunk. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, in explaining the phenomenon to people, Paul actually, uh, Peter actually referenced, Peter actually referenced Joel chapter 2 verse 28. 
Uh, so that's where you will find the word dream. It was a reference in preaching. Now, we have to speak to two, uh, Joel 2.28 because God actually said that one of the proof of this dispensation is that young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. But how is it? Uh, because let me now say to us that that word young men seeing visions and dreams, uh, you can actually pull those words together in that prophecy as meaning that they will receive prophetic instructions, prophetic mandate, uh, and prophetic uh, proof from me. God will tell them what will happen. God will send them to spaces and places uh, uh, because of my power that will be upon. He's talking about prophetic instructions, uh, uh, knowings, uh, getting mandates from heaven. Right? Um, so prior to old New Testament time, it's difficult for somebody to say, the Lord has called me and he has sent me to go back to Africa and liberate his people. That's a prophetic mandate. <laughs> I mean, in the Old Testament, everybody was just in, in the synagogue. Everybody was just... But right now, somebody can even stand up in this church and say, God said I should not come to church again. Right? God said I should, from now, I should be teaching every 11 a.m. on TV. And he buys camera. And it's a prophetic instruction. You cannot, you may not like it, but it's what the Lord has said. It's what the Lord has said. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, because that has happened, right? So, because the only proof, and it's a legit proof, uh, is that word of Joel 2.28. That's the only proof that there will still be dreams in our time. That's the only proof. Is that prophecy. If that prophecy were taken away, in fact, I would say it all oh, hard, that God would not speak to you if you had dreams. But because of the validity of that just one statement, then I, I cannot say that the Lord does not still speak via dreams. I myself have had dreams. And I can lay hold on a pretty few dreams where I can say without a doubt that that was God speaking to me. But they are compared, they are few. When you compare them in numbers to the amount of dreams I've had. Do you understand that? The number of dreams that I can say that was God speaking to me, if you compare it with the number of dreams I have had, they are very few. They are very few. They are very few. I mean, I, I know people who dream every night. I am trying to say that those God-given dreams may not even be in a year. Therefore, not all dreams are from God. In fact, most dreams are not of God. Depending on your spiritual growth, less than 5% of your dreams are from God. Are from God from God, I didn't expect you to smile here. But let me equip you. How can you know the dreams that are from God? How can I know? There are what we call elements of a God-given dream. So that when you wake up, you know, this one is a God-given dream. There are elements of a God-given dream. Number one, they move you forward in ongoing conversations with God. They move you forward in ongoing conversations with God. A God-given dream will move you forward. When you are praying concerning a decision and you perceive that what was God saying, that what God was saying is that he's affirming what you are praying for in their dream, then he pushes you forward. He pushes you forward. I, I remember many years ago, I, I finished school. I finished school, uh, secondary school, and uh, I, I, I wanted to move away from science, to social sciences, and I wanted to do economics. And my dad was, at that time, pursuing his PhD in geography. So my dad wanted me to read geography. And I said to him, oh, I am not doing geography. And he said, it's not just mountain and rock. I said, I don't care. Uh, he said, but I know you don't. You don't do good in mathematics. Do you understand the math that are in economics? Or you just think it's straight by butter? Uh, so we had that conversation, and then I left. Some weeks later, I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw myself on a system. Now, I mean, we just bought a system, so I should never see myself. I didn't know that there can be rocks on the system, right? And I saw myself panning with a mouse, and then these rocks would change to dimensions and to figures. And I went to collect Jampo. And then I wrote first choice, geography, second choice, geography. And then I gave it to my dad. And then he said, ah, I thought you said that. I said, I saw it in a dream. I saw it in a dream. So, so dreams can take you forward. In a God giving in a God conversation, it takes you forward. Number two, they have the element of the supernatural. All dreams are not of God. Some dreams are just because you talk too much and just through the conversation, 
there. You and your friends, you're having a dream, you're still gathered together talking. That's not, there's nothing supernatural there. A dream will have supernatural. Again, we must appeal to Jacob. You saw that dream he had. He saw a ladder from heaven to her, touching her, and he saw angels ascending and descending. That's a supernatural element there. If your dream does not have supernatural element, I'm not talking about I ate popcorn in my dream and I'm not supposed to eat. Some people dream is that they saw themselves back in their secondary school. If you think back, you have already put something in your record. You had a conversation with some of your old school roommates, uh, classmates in school. And that conversation has brought certain things into your memory. And when you dream, it has a rearrangement. I'll still tell you about that, right? Don't worry. So basically, not all of those dreams means that you need deliverance. The girl, can, 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 we, can we take a praise break, right? So, I mean, some people will be delivered by truth, right? Not all of your dreams means you need deliverance. How many deliverance means that it doesn't take me many to cast out devils? If I, I don't do it again, there are boys who will do it. You understand? They will just, demons are not something I want to sweat about in Lagos. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. So, so, some dreams must be discarded immediately. Are you following what I'm saying? How can I, at this stage in life, I mean, should be, go out, come in. Ah, no, no. No, no. No, we've, we've done that, been that, seen that. You get what I'm saying? We can do that in a general meeting, but you alone. I will call somebody, cast that DD or out, and let's continue. Number three, they can serve as guides. Matthew 2 13, he, he, dreams guided Joseph in decision making. You know, I told you about Canada, right? I was how, how the law stopped me from going to Canada. Glory be to God. Uh, many of you would not even like that, that the law stopped you from going to Canada. The only place the Lord can stop you from is going to my way. But the Lord did stop me. And after I accepted that, then the Lord also began to show me certain dreams of how my life in Canada would look like. Let me say this to you. If you have ever been abroad before outside of Nigeria, you will understand that there's no dust. If the snap pictures is so great, even that your techno phone that you think is is not stupid, if you actually snap with that phone on the street of Denmark, you will see how beautiful it is. The, the sky is blue. So if we first of all give you that background, it's not everybody that's abroad that is better than you. It's not. In fact, the kind of work they do or linear, you can't do it. You are too lazy. You can't do it. People that marry people don't see each other. As he's coming inside, he's going out. But because as I'm going out, as I quickly did the reels. UK. <laughs> you think UK people are UK, you know, it's not very easy. Oh. You call some of them, missed calls are plenty. You call somebody in Nigeria, they'll call you back to stay on 440 minutes because you have time. Their own time is money. And they immediately try it. Serve as guide number four. I don't want to distract myself today. I want to teach. Number four, reviews the future. Dreams reviews the future. And that's what we found in 41, Genesis 41, 25 to 27. Joseph told his brothers, you can't argue with what God has said. You guys will serve me. I'm not saying you will serve me, but I am higher. When I saw what I saw supernaturally and spiritually is that I am the leader. You I can be number eleven, but I am the leader. There's nothing to argue about here. I mean, they argue with it, but it reveals the future. Some people see themselves preaching and teaching the gospel. That's what some people see. As you dream every time, that's what you see. That's valid. That's valid. That's valid. You see yourself doing that every time, that's valid. Because that's a taste of the supernatural. That reveals the future. Number four, they can show us God's plan. Your dream can reveal the plan of God for your life. I mean, I can see yourself. Somebody say you have, I saw myself. Somebody say, I'll show you I'm going to get married. I saw myself with my husband, with children. I even saw myself pregnant. Ah! Spiritual husband. <laughs> Not everything is spiritual husband. In fact, the problem sometimes is that your character, nobody can stay with you. If you change your character, you'll get married this year. Number six, it contains divine wisdom. They share with you something you never thought of before. I mean, even if you said you don't believe in dreams, look at the one that Jacob had. Can anybody on that argue with that dream? That he saw striped animals. That's what he saw. 
animals are striped. And he began to put them before populace, and that's what was made. That's what they were giving back to. It's a business. Some of you have business ideas. It came from, even if, no matter what I say now, because some people say, I still don't say, just saying rubbish. I, the the, the ministry I'm doing now, it came from dreams. That's valid. That's very valid. So we got to understand that there are seasons and times that God will speak to you to validate, to push you forward in a journey, to let you know what the future looks like uh, through dreams. Uh, somebody's listening to me. If you have any dream that doesn't contain these elements, please discard it. It is Shawama, discard it. When I hit Pandejam in my dream, I order Pandejam when I wake up. Glory be to God. It means that I've been thirsty for it. Glory be to God. I don't look for somebody to come and lay hands on me and say, Moti, do, Moti, somebody say, you are taking a crow in your dream. You know how those, your mommy tell you things, taking a crow in your dream. I, some people say, they don't even talk crow again because of those things. I mean, ignorance has put us in trouble. I didn't find food. He said, whatever they give unto you with thanksgiving, come and eat it and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? We've got to be New Testament believers. It's either we are New Testament believers or we are not. And therefore, I can't tell you of the authority you have in Christ. I'm not also telling you that this is not the primary way God lives in this kingdom. You can't be comfortable with a truth in the New Testament and be uncomfortable with another truth in the New Testament. We, we, are, not living as ne- we are not living on negoti- negotiable truths. The truth is truth. No matter how you put it down, truth is truth. The Yoruba says if you drop a cutlass 200 times, it is still the same side it's going to follow. The same side. Truth will always be truth. Whether you will say truth in California, whether you say truth in Tokyo, whether you say truth in Pakistan, whether you say truth in Sudan or Niger. Uh, Nigeria has no Niger now. Praise God. <laughs> right. My dreams are powerful. They are very powerful. Can I begin to share with you what are the limitations of dream in this dispensation? And therefore you can't trust them. What are the limitations of dreams in this dispensation? Am I helping somebody to do you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know, what will you do? Are you being set free? So now you see you don't have the only deliverance. <laughs> but how will deliverance mean that it? Glory to God. You know there's no deliverance ministry? Every believer has been given that ministry. Every believer to cast out devils. I can't build a ministry and call it a deliverance ministry. I can build a ministry and call it a ministry on intimacy, on joy, on the spirit, on anything, and deliverance will take place, yes. But every believer is set to go and cast out devils. Not to run from devils. You run away from devils, you leave the devil alone, the devil leaves you alone, and you go on your own. Praise God. When people talk like that, I say ignorance on high heels. You know why? Jesus was speaking. The Bible told us God asked the devil himself. That means the devil is not who you think he is. He goes to the presence of God. So why won't witches come to church? Amen. He, the devil goes to God's presence. And he went there. He, you see, he went there. I said, hello, how are you, sir? I'm good. Where are you coming from, Ogade? I said, you know, I'm coming from walking to and fro the whole heart. Uh, you, what do you think he was doing? You think he was doing visitation? No, no. He's looking for whom he may devour. That's what he's looking for. The devil has never been looking for smart Christians. He has never, he's, he's not interested in believers who understand their authority. He doesn't. He's looking for weak vessels. It's a game. Have you not, have you, don't you, you people should go and watch Geographic Channel. Stop watching Big Brother Africa alone. You will see that when in Geographic Channel, when, 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 they, when an animal, a bigger animal, carnivore, is going to go and chase a game. What they do is that the first thing is to locate the weaker one. So that when he starts running, the weaker one is the one he chases after. Because he, that's what he will get. That's what the devil does. You see, it's like, you see, if you understand the savannah, you understand why God told him that he's roused like a lion. He's not a lion. But the way he does is that, what he does is that he's looking for weak vessels. So that when he disciplines that weak vessel, people will be afraid of him. And that's why you are in a church that believes on scriptures so that you can be strong in your faith. Limitations of dreams in this dispensation. Number one, dreams are sleep bound. Dreams are what? Ah, imagine the Lord 
wanted you to um, talk to somebody in a car. As you are on the plane together, you are traveling together. The Lord wanted you to speak to somebody by your side. By your side. So that um, that person is the next connection to your next level. And the Spirit is supposed to just speak to you at that moment. Say, speak to that man now. Talk to him about your business. You are thinking, why would I talk to my stranger about my business? But the Lord said, talk to your about it. And that's supposed to take you to the next level. That's the leading of God. Is that not so? We're talking about dreams and divine leading. But for you, you cannot hear. Because it's dream. So first of all, you've got to sleep on the plane. And after you, have, you sleep, you have to sleep so much that you have to get into what is called in psychology, a REM sleep. That is why it is your period of REM. Uh, that sleep happens. So, that dreams happen. So, you've got to, so if it is just a 40 minute one, <clears throat> you can't get anything. So, you've got to, it has to be a long journey for God to speak to you. <laughs> Download failed. You see, what I'm saying is that imagine you are supposed to travel on a journey and you go to the, to the, to, to the park and the Lord said, don't take that car. Go out now. Now, you did not hear because the way the Lord speaks to you is dreams. So you first of all must have entered that car and the car must not be full, or full on time. So you can say, Falu Shabali, sleep immediately. And then the Lord can, you can say, and I say, I run out. By the time you want to run out, the car would have moved. <laughs> you see the danger? It, it's not a good, it's sleep bound. Meanwhile, life decisions are time bound. They are urgent and they don't give room for one to sleep. Don't give room. Number two, dreams may have sources apart from God. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 2. Jeremiah 23, 32. Can we read Jeremiah 23, 32? The person that did that, the guy, the guy needs inspiration. What is some sorry? All right. <laughs> Behold, I'm against those who prophesy what they prophesy. So dreams can be false. Dreams can be false. I want to give you three sources of dreams. Number one, human being, yourself. You are the first source of dreams. Yourself. I hope you know that psychologists teaches and believe that dreaming one to two hours a day is normal. They believe that that is the way the mind resets itself. And that is the way you replay the activities of the day. In fact, dreaming actually resets your brain to start again. It's like your brain has a filing system. And so it is via dream that you refile according to the way it's supposed to be, the activities of your life. In fact, psychologists also believe that dreams is a place where you go. It's your place your unconscious mind go as it contains things that he knows is restrained and constrained from doing in the physical Did you get that? <laughs> I'm about to bust some people's bubbles. It is the place your mind and your heart goes where the things it cannot do in the physical is restrained from doing them in the physical. Your heart, your mind goes there in dreams. That is why you masturbate. I mean, you wake up and you say, I have a wet dream. <laughs> oh! I know you will not laugh. You will not do like you know what I'm talking about. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. But because you can't do anything, you're a born again believer. But in your heart, you have been trying to see what that woman looks like. So in your dream, your mind expresses itself. I hope you know that when you sleep, your brain is active. So that your brain just keeps working. That's why some of you travel to the U.S. I say, God, God told me I should jump. I saw a dream. He didn't say you should go. You have connected it in your mind. You have been desiring it for a long time. It has happened in your dream. You see what I'm saying here? So what occupy your mind during the day will happen in your sleep. That's why some of you have a lot of nightmare. It is the films you watch. The zombies you watch. <laughs> you see it is, that's why you see a lot of blood they are chasing me, they are chasing me 
It is what has been programmed in your mind. In fact, Kenneth Copeland says, if you want to stop yourself from having evil dreams, ensure that the last thought you have at night is about scriptures. It's about scriptures. The reason you wake up wet every night is because the last person you talk to is that girlfriend you have not married. And you are very aroused when you are speaking. There are no under 20 here. Glory be to God. All right, so let me continue. Not all dreams are supernatural. Number two, dreams can be from God. I'm talking about sources of dreams, right? The second one is that dreams can be from God. And then number three, the be careful of the deception of the devil. I have seen people, and, and, and you see, how does the devil work? The devil does not have the capacity to get into your mind. and It can affect your dream. There's no place in scriptures where people are dreamed by the devil. But you know what the devil does? If the devil can control your mind to desire what God does not want you to desire, he will have it in your dreams also. That is why the only place you have had proof for that marriage is in dreams. When you wake up, your heart is saying, don't marry that man. Everything says, don't marry that man. But you keep seeing me in your dream. It's because you desire his money. Your desire is money. And that's why you, set, you saw him. He has nothing to do with God. In fact, when you woke up and you pray, your heart beats faster as you think it's coming. Because you know that, ah, this guy can slap me. But the reason you keep going, you say, I saw it in my dream, is a lie. It's because he's been feeding you, he's been paying your bills, uh, he, and, and he has like five cars. You know that by marrying him, you have access to two. Can, can you see what we are talking about here? I've seen marriages combo. And I asked the people, how why did you marry him? I show him in my dream. Quiet, New Testament believer. That's not enough. That's not enough. You can build your house or your life on solid fantasy. Fantasy. Because that's what happens. You just fantasize and it takes you to the dream world. Dream is not anything spiritual. You see, that's why you should not count on it. Unbelievers dream. So how are you counting and defending and making life decisions based on dreams? The devil knows your source of guidance. That the only thing you, you are guided by dream, he will hijack the process. He will hijack the process. Number three, dreams can be forgotten. <laughs> That's why you can't count on it. How many times have you dreamt and you can't remember? Some people will be calling you, this thing is important. I know it is important. Pastor, I can't remember it. Or oh, guys, it's important you remember it. Let it go. Let it go. You know, and, and people forget dreams. It's okay. And therefore, you have to be careful. Can the you said, if you wake up and you can't remember the dream, he said, let it go. Some people waste their time. I know people who will go and consult prophets. See, I've been having series of dreams and I forget them. And you know, my dream used to be very important. Because, oh, allow me, man, share. My dream used to happen. So in, in recent times, I have not been able to. So this ones, I will wake up and I will not remember it. I wake up and I will not remember it. And they are speaking like they are speaking some giant truths. And so the prophet will say, mm, 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 hey, hey, she, hey, who, hey, she, Ali. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Go and fast 21 days. Now, because your spirit man is elevated in Jesus, if I will come to me, I'm telling you the secret. You come to me and tell me that nonsense. What I'll tell you is that I'll say you should go and fast. And read the Bible. I'll give you Bible to read. You will discover that the dreams you'll be having from there will be spiritual. Because your mind now is concentrated on the truth. Can I tell you psychologically if you want to remember your dream? You just tell yourself before you sleep, I remember my dream. I remember my dream. I remember. Program it in your brain and it will happen. It tells you that most of the sources of your dream are from your brain. <laughs> Number four, dreams have to be interpreted to get their proper meaning. A wrong interpretation may cause a lot of havoc. You see, sometimes the problem is not with the dream. It's that when you told that person that was the dream, the person I interpreted is saying, you know, I, I saw a dream, sir. I saw a dream. I saw bread on the table. And there were plenty. And I sat down. But suddenly, somebody came and took me from that table. And I was walking. And some people came to that table and started eating. Ah, they say, ah. What is that going to They want to take food from you. 
now, why is it not interpreted that the Lord has called you to be providing food for others? Why, why is it not interpreted that way? It's not interpreted that way because you are looking for problem and they will help you find it. <laughs> Just something. You see, Potiphar and Nebuchadnezzar, they have to interpret their dreams. If you can't interpret a dream, man of God, discard it. Number five, dreams are not sometimes specific as they come in figures and shadows. But this time, the Holy Spirit speaks to us all. Can I hear somebody shout that? The Greek word means distinctly, clearly, and explicitly. When the Spirit speaks, there is no ambiguity. It's clear. Here is what the Lord says. You know. And then number six is why you can't count on your dream. Is uh, The Lord told me this this morning. It's because of the silence of dreams. Have you ever been asking God for guidance? And you know you say the Lord led me through dream. And man, somebody woman was talking about the Lord has given them a series of prophetic dreams. Right? And, and so somebody said, oh, prophetic dreams and all of that. And so you are believing God as it concerns whether that's the person to marry or whether to relocate or whether to, to invest in that business or not. And so you pray and you sleep. And you have been praying and sleeping. And there's no dream as it concerns that. The silence of dreams. So, what happens when that happens to you? How will you make decisions? Or you will not make? You say, oh Lord, that kid, the Lord is quiet. So, you leave that girl for five years. No, your brother will now come. You know, many times when you say, it's not an enemy that eventually married the girl you wanted to marry, but you did not speak. It's your brother that always do it. Do you, have, you, have you discovered that in church? Right? You are looking at that girl. I said, this girl should be married to you. Before you know it, somebody just took the girl. I said, ah! And I was believing God. Oh, believe. You are waiting for dream. You are waiting for confirmation in dreams. But somebody who had, was walking and Lord said, look to your side. He didn't have to sleep. His eyes was red on fire. The Lord said, that is your wife. With that person, you can walk life together. And the person took, took the woman and left. And you were saying, ah, but I was waiting on God. Pastor, he took my wife. silence of dream. We have all had seasons where dreams don't come. We all have had that season. You want God's instruction concerning a matter and you are waiting on dreams and you have nothing. Does it mean God was not speaking to you? How can a father be quiet? How can a loving God be quiet? Number seven, some people have more faith. When the Lord told me this, it shook me. Some people have more faith in their dreams than they have in Jesus. Can I say that again? Some people have more faith in their dreams than they have in Jesus. You hear people say, my dreams always come to pass. My dreams are 100%. When people die in my dream, they are dead. When I see somebody die, they are dead. They are dead. Let me say this to you. The reason you dream that people die and they die is not because you dream that they die. It's because you believed it, you confessed it, and it came to pass. It was your believing and confession that killed them, not their dream. Because it will be unto you according to your faith. And that's why believers need to be delivered from this nonsense. I've had a lot of people say, ah, he lost his job. My brother lost his job in my dream. He's going to lose his job. Every of my dream come to pass. They say it. There is a certainty. Confession is powerful. They begin to confess it and they are not confessing it from the place of doubt. They are confessing it from the place of belief because they believe in their dream and therefore the people die, the people lose their job and they say, the Lord showed me. You are a wicked man. The Lord did not show you anything. You are the one who called it so. You call the things that be not as though they were. So when the devil wants to deceive a generation, he throws the dream to them, they grab it and they run with it. Do you know how many people have died in my dream? I'm not sure, even me, myself. <laughs> if you die in your dream, you come and meet me. Who do I go and meet? <laughs> I said nothing about it. It's just a play. It really, it's just a play. Why? Because my life is seated in Christ. 
I would rather believe God's word than a stupid dream. It's because I took him up and idea. Have you not discovered that when you take so much carbohydrates, you wake up with so much stupid dreams? I'm not joking. I have banned it in my house. Please don't give. I know this thing, this psychology. Some of you need to enter into the school of psychology. You will discover some of the things wrong with you. They are not spiritual. Stop eating fufu at night. You will stop dreaming. What is the problem? Because you see, carbohydrate has a way of running a lot of sugar in you. Have you not discovered that many dreams happen in the, what you call REM sleep? People have more sleep when their brain is about to start up. That means that you would have more dreams in the early hours of the morning. Ah, it was around four the Lord spoke to me. Shut up. It was around 5.30 the Lord spoke to me. The Lord told me. And, and evil is happening and you will see people confessing it with pride. Even your family, they respect you. Ah, shalalala. <laughs> Shola the dreamer. And you're you working. Ah, Shola had a dream. That's not your husband. That's not your husband. Shola hated that man from the day one. He did not like that man. So he now had a dream that that man slapped her sister. Of course, if I were panic, because you don't like the person in the first place. Do you see where we are coming from? A lot of ignorance. And why is this so? We trust our dream more than the Christ. And therefore, and, and the Lord told me, the Lord said, believers love their dreams and their dreams love them. Say, be careful, oh, believers. What you want to teach, be careful, oh, believers love their dreams. They love their dreams. Some people here have never had God, but they have had him through dreams. Never, never had a voice, never had an inner weakness, and they have been born again for many years. God has been speaking to them, but they have quieted it. They just want to sleep and let God come like that. You have programmed the Lord to how the Lord must speak to you. And it must be through dreams. You should have come in the days of Jeremiah. Your name by now should have been Obadiah Jeremiah. The Holy Spirit dwells on your inside. There is a better way. It isn't dream that kill people, it is their confession. I say that to you again. Their agreement and their believing. I mean, when I share, you know, they call me Shalalala, Shalala the dreamer. And I say, uh -huh. I saw, I saw uncle something died. And your dad say, ah! I let them I say, what has happened there? Two witnesses. Out of two or three witnesses. He has gotten a proof. If you have told me as I'm your father, I say, he does not die. He lives. He lives. He is not dead. Go back and sleep and you see him alive. I command you and I instruct you to go and sleep and see him live. Because whatsoever is in Christ live and they do not die. Oh, I know the promise the Lord has given down my uncle. And it's that with long life and with prosperity will satisfy him. Whatever the dream brings, whatever the devil brings, I reject it. But you know the reason you have been in love with your dreams because it was your dream that showed you will get a job. So that the devil will let you see some good things, then he will introduce some bad ones. So that bad one is entirely shield. There's nothing we can do. Both good and bad, I don't want. That's me. I have never made an instrumental decision based on dream. That might my, my because of dream. Dream. If it was dream, do you know how many lady I've been working with? I said the law has spoken. I wore a tooth. He wore, he, she wore a gown. What if we are climbing the staircase together to church at the same time? That's what you saw. He said, no, she was my company. We are working company to the house of the Lord. How can you make such a decision based on that? Now, marriage is not working. You say, but I saw him. My Lord told me. Lord, don't tell you anything. It was your dream. You are deified above the Christ. Didn't see anything to you. I asked the Lord. I said, so I'm prepared this morning. I asked him. I said, I'm prepared theologically for this. I said, what is your response to what I've prepared? Why are there no practical leading in the New Testament, Lord? I was asking him, searching the mind of God. He said, because now, listen, listen to what the Lord said to me. He said, because now I walk with my people, my spirit lives in them. They have the indwelling spirit. I don't have to wait till they sleep to speak to them. I can speak with them now. The reason they all wait for dream and depend on dream is that they haven't developed their relationship with me. That's the verdict of heaven. That's the verdict of heaven. 
In conclusion, I want to make certain statements and then we'll be ready to go home. Have I helped somebody? Number one, the more you mature in the things of the Spirit, the less dependent you are on dreams for instruction and direction. The more you mature in the things of the Spirit, the less dependent you are on dreams for instruction and direction. Grow! Man of God, grow! Sister J, grow! So that you won't send your children to bad school after you get married. Number two statement I want to make is that the deafening oh, some of the things I say are not there because they came after the after I've sent in the slides so glory to God. You know you keep progressing, you keep knowing more, you keep looking at the world. Listen to this the deafening silence of no practical example of being led by dreams in the New Testament tells us something that we must tread carefully as it concerns dreams. We must tread carefully. Never you make a decision based on dreams alone. Never. Except it bears witness. Except it takes you further in an ongoing conversation with God. Except that. Never make that decision. Number three. If any dream is not in alignment with God's word and God's promises to you, reject it. Reject it. You are pregnant in, in, in your sleep, pregnant every time, and you are not pregnant in real life, and you are married. You reject it. Stand up and reject it. Don't, don't give room. He's a okay, spiritual husband. And the word I was before is my grandfather's children. Stop that nonsense. Reject it in Christ. Reject it. He who the son is set free is free indeed. I'm free indeed. I'm free. I'm free. No more chain is holding me. I'm free. I'm free. Free to lift my hands. Free to shout again. Free. Totally free. The day I found the truth in me and my family. Some prayer points, I don't pray again with them. I'm not, I don't stop people from praying their prayers. It might, it don't disturb my life. I don't pray for what Jesus has done. I don't pray for what he settled in Calvary. Why is it that believers, so, the way we talk, you think the devil is still raining and God is just sometimes outsmarting him, outsmarting him. It's like there's a confusion in heaven. Who is really at church in charge? See, if you have a nightmare, sometimes depending on the supernatural element, I have had dreams that ah, I wake up and say, kill on Shelley, why? Kill on Shelley! Kill on Shelley, that's the last thing you had. I have gone back. I all roll. Boom. Continue the thing. Continue. Some people die because they are waiting on hours without sleeping. Many born again believers have blood pressure. Have a pressure. They can't sleep. They can't sleep. They have treated malaria, treated typhoid. It's because every time those stupid sleep come, dreams come also with them. And so when they have people drink, they start praying. They, ch they channel three hours. Three hours. Then before they know it, it's five o'clock. They have to go to work. And then they go to work, they're looking like this. Their eyes look like this because they didn't sleep. The next day, the devil makes it happen again. So that when they get to work, they are making irrational decisions. You say, what happened? I've been battling with the princes of the world. So Jesus left some people for you to battle with, have you? I tell people, there's a way you fight for something. You pray, 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 pray. You are looking for something. You are praying. Say, you pray, pray, pray. And you pray some prayers. I mean, 20 hours every day, 15 hours every day. And you did it for three months. Now you got that thing. Somebody now says, Grace, I will slap the person. I work for this one. Prayer, I pray. Ah! I pray for this one. Whenever the believer can say, he deserves a thing. That thing didn't come from Christ. Am I saying you don't pray? I'm saying what pushes you should not be the fear. It should be the love of Christ. I love that blessing. It's, it's a deliverance. <laughs> Glory be to God. You 
shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? The word libraries. There are better and surer guides for the New Testament believer than depending on dreams. And that's what I want to share with you from next week. We're going to, we're going to learn about how do I hear the voice of the Spirit. You have heard people talk about, I had a witness. The inner witness. You have him. You are born again, you have him. It's because you have never tuned in. I will t- tell you how to tune in. You will hear God clearly and expressly. What are we talking about? It's so simple to hear God. Can't you hear your father when he speaks to you? When your father has called you with straight number, don't you know that's your dad speaking? Your friend was deceiving you the other day on your birthday, and you pick up his voice. Say, oh, hola, hola, you're such a silly guy. <laughs> and Ola is laughing. You're abusing him, he's laughing because of love. Ola, you're such a silly guy. <laughs> but you picked out the voice because you are used to the voice. You hear God's voice. He speaks to you. Glory be to God. Making life decisions based on dreams is walking on shaking grounds. Shaky. Shaky ground. Shaky ground. Many believers still depend only on dreams for guidance. Thereby shutting out the shore and the blessed voice of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. And finally, the voice of the Holy Spirit should be the staff that guides the believer. The voice of the Holy Spirit. Not dreams. As many as are led by dreams, they are the children of God. That's not what the scripture says. Unbelievers dream. I've showed you from scriptures. Right? What's past wife dreams? So there's nothing only that you dreamt, right? But there are dreams that can come to you from God. I hope I established that also. Because there are, there are and I've told you the elements of those God-given dreams, right? Every jargon's dream that doesn't have that element, throw it away. Understand what I'm saying? Throw it away. It's not like I saw myself in primary school, I was wearing school uniform. If you see that in your life there has been retardation, there is no growth. And despite you've done all uh, those things, then you can appear for deliverance. Because that can be proof. That can be proof. But if everything around you works well, you saw yourself in school, maybe you should go to that school and buy them books and pay some people's school fees. Are you following what I'm saying? But if certain things are not working, it might be a proof that this is what you should check. But checking it does not mean there's anything wrong about that school. Checking it means appear before a man of God or appear to yourself. There's something called self-deliverance and do it for yourself. Listen, there's nothing called deliverance other than standing on the authority of Christ and commanding lives to align with the victory of Calvary. That's deliverance. Anything that tells you otherwise lying to you. That's deliverance. We stand. George, is that not so? Stand. I thought that all of them, there are plenty here. Stand on the word of God. Stand on what Jesus has done. Are you following me? Obina, you following what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? You stand on the truth. There's no looking at faces. They are tall, they are big, they have money. Demons are demons everywhere. Demons in Lekki is not different. I've discovered they are not different from demons in Tanka, in Lori. They are the same demons everywhere. Migrating from people to people as you locate, you locate with them. Glory to God. But we stand on the audacity of scriptures and the finished works of Calvary and we declare that the life must align with the victory of Calvary. That is deliverance. Your life, your victory, your acceleration, every part of your life must align with the victory of Calvary. That is deliverance. That is deliverance. It's not taking zobo. It's not chaining people down. It's not, it's not oil. It's aligning lives with the victory of Calvary. If Jesus has done it, it should be a reality in your life. If you are addicted to anything apart from the Christ, you can be delivered from it because the part of the believer should be as the shining light that shines more and more, even unto the perfect day. I've come to declare to you it's your day of victory. I've come to declare to you that your life aligns with the victory of Calvary. I've come to declare to you that from now your ears hear and your eyes are open. In the name of Jesus, up your hands and begin to say Lord I receive your victory Lord I receive your victory and I walk in your victory begin to declare I walk in your victory say blessed are my eyes for they see 
begin to declare, blessed are my eyes for the see. Blessed are my ears for the hear. Blessed are my mind for the receive instruction from God. I'm led of the Spirit. Can you begin to declare it this morning? I am led of the Spirit. I am led of the Spirit. You are not led by dreams. You are not led by your feelings. You are not led by your emotions. I am led by the Spirit. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I'm led by the Spirit. As many as desire direction, we'll get direction tonight. We'll get direction this morning. I am led of the Spirit. I am led of the Spirit. I am led of the Spirit. Glory to God. I'm led of the Spirit. Who? I'm led of the Spirit. I hear a voice saying, This is the way. 30, 21, Isaiah, you shall hear a voice saying, This is the way. When you turn to the right or to the left, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Child of God, this is the way. He didn't say you will dream dreams. He said you will hear a voice saying, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. I hear a voice. This is the way. Is somebody in the valley of decision? Can you say, I hear a voice saying, this is the way. This is the way. No, 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 no. I, I hear a voice saying, this is the way. I receive divine guidance. I hear the voice of the Spirit. I hear the voice of the Spirit. Kapasia Ladashi. Beri Kapaliataba. Refenene Swata. I am led of the Spirit. I am led of the Spirit. Woo! I am led of the Spirit. Yes. <laughs> I am led of the Spirit. Lift up your hands. With hands open wide, we say, Lord, here is our confession. Here is how our faith is. Our faith is in the Christ and the finished works of Calvary. Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he will send you and help us. And he will be the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Jesus said he will guide us into all truth. Father, with hands lifted, we surrender ourselves to the leading of the spirit. We surrender ourselves to the leading of the spirit. We are guided. We are led. We are moved by him. We hear a voice saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Thank you for divine guidance. Thank you for the word is truth. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Father. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed, all head bowed. It's a good place to make a call this day. There is a separation between believers and unbelievers. Is that unbelievers don't have the spirit so they can't be led of earth but believers do if you are born again under the sound of my voice if jesus come now you know you are going to make heaven can you throw your hands up to heaven i know i'm born again jesus come i'm going to make heaven nobody looking around nobody in the seats nobody deceiving one another we are just a jesus people a jesus community hanging out with christ that's all we do every sunday your hand is not raised. I like to lead you to Christ. I would like today to be that day where your life changes. I like today to be that day, the beginning of good things for you. If your hand is not raised and you are saying, you know what, PFA, I like to know Christ. I like to be led of the Spirit. Would you put your hands on your chest? Let me pray for you where you are. God bless you, my brother. I can see you. Everyone can see you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. As you put your hand on your chest, sisters and brothers, 
You are saying, God, take me as I am. Take me as I am. Church, whether your hand is raised, whether your hand is on your chest, let's do this prayer together. Whether your hand is raised or your chest, if it's on your chest, keep it there. If it's raised, keep it there. Can we say this prayer together? Everlasting Father. Come and say it well. Let's lead our brethren home. Let's lead them to Christ together. Be your brother's keeper. Let's just follow them as we take them to the throne room and present them before the Christ. Fruit of his sacrifice. Everlasting Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. We believe and we confess that Jesus is Lord. Therefore, we are born again. We are new creatures. We open the door of our hearts. Jesus, come in. Dwell inside of us. Live here. Spirit of a living God, baptize us afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to say congratulations. It's the beginning of the best days of your life. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate God? Hallelujah.